Welcome back to our special coverage of the Brian Laundry manhunt. For many TV viewers and online followers, you know who you are. Brian Laundry is the most wanted man in America. But the title of television's most hunted man, well, that belongs to a guy named Joel Lambert. A Navy SEAL for 10 years, Lambert was the star of the show Lone Target. In each episode, he had just 48 hours to elude the best fugitive trackers in the world, including the Korean National Police in South Korea and the U.S. Army's Phantom Recon Unit in the Arizona desert. There is nobody in the world more equipped to avoid capture for long periods of time, and so we thought who better to help find a man on the run like Brian Laundry than the man himself, Joel Lambert. Thank you so much for uh, for being with me tonight, Joel. The, the, I just keep thinking about all the places that, that Brian Laundry could be, and they've been places maybe that you have eluded capture, swamps and, and mountains and, and deserts and forests and even cities, but can you tell me which one is the easiest to get lost in and which one is the easiest to get caught in? Hi, Ashley, thanks for having me. Well, um, really, the situation always is gonna dictate your response and there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages there are always trade-offs in any situation that you're in. For instance, the jungle is a very difficult, swamps a very difficult, um, mine-sucking place to be, but there's abundant water and there's generally lots of food that you can find and it's very easy to get yourself lost and, and conceal a trail. Um, cities, some cities are really easy to get lost in. Others, like uh, South Korea, they've got, you know, um, 5,000 CCTV cameras all over the, um, the city with facial recognition technology. So it just depends on the situation um, what is best. I don't know what Brian Laundry knows, what his skill sets are, where he's comfortable. Those are the kinds of things that you need to know in order to assess where he's going to be comfortable and where he's not going to be comfortable. Sometimes I, I wonder, Joel, animals. if he's watching us, you know? I, I wonder, like, if he's watching TV somewhere. But then I saw an episode of you in the Florida Everglades, and you were actually really close to the people hunting you. You could even get eyes on them. I want to play that clip and ask you about it on the other side. Take a look. Okay. Out here with not a lot of activity. These guys. So again, they put the camera up. up. Like a Christmas tree. Normally I want to keep as much distance between Hunter Force and I as I can, but I've got a little friend. This is a remote controlled robot with a manipulator arm and with five or six low light infrared cameras to reconnaissance the area, see where they're at, see how many there are, and just what I'm up against. I also need to find a way to start the hunt without giving away my position. I can see the hunter for us. Oh, I see a lot of gear. Look like they're ready for war. Five people I see so far. I don't know, Joel. Something tells me that you're too good at it. I don't think Brian Laundry would dare get close to people who might be able to spot him. Well, he's not an expert. You are. What do you guess that he's doing? Well, I, I really don't know. What I would want to know if I were on this job is I would want to know all the intelligence I could get from his family, whether that's good or bad. Human intelligence can be some of the best intelligence you can get but it's also unreliable so you need to mitigate that with all the other things that you know so you know you really need to dig in and try to read this guy's brain and see where he's going to be comfortable what kind of skill sets he has because people you know we're, we're animals we take the path of least resistance we're going to go to what is most comfortable for us we're going to go to the easiest route and so you need to find out what the easiest route is for this guy where he's most comfortable and then start there well, you know, it's interesting you should say that because, you know, there, there were witnesses. We were talking to witnesses uh, and, and they were saying Appalachian Trail. We think, the, you know, we, we, I think we saw him on the Appalachian Trail and he certainly knows the Appalachian Trail. But I was fascinated to watch this episode with you when it was like sometimes, you know, it's not always a bad thing to be spotted. And that threw me for a complete loop. But I'm going to play the moment and the viewers will get what you meant when they see it. Take a look. Human intelligence, or, or what people tell you, is some of the best intelligence that you can get, but it's also some of the most unreliable. I go in and it conspicuously leave in a deceptive direction. When the hunter force comes through, they're gonna ask around 
and they're gonna point them exactly the way I wanted to think I went. All right, guys, coming through. Hi. Oh, man. This is a little more than I was expecting. The first time that uh, I've asked there, they told me that they move uh, that way. Then the other guys, they, they told me they didn't see anything. As Joel anticipated, human intelligence is unpredictable. Yeah. As the villagers all unintentionally give conflicting reports to the ranger. I suspect Brian Laundrie is not smart enough to think uh, in advance to do, you know, a bait and switch like you did. But I guess it is a good tactic. Well, it can be in the situation where they didn't know who I was and I was kind of at a blank slate that I could go in and, and create whatever narrative I wanted to. Brian Laundrie doesn't have that luxury. He's a wanted man. Whatever kind of deception he's going to be doing, uh, if he's smart, it wouldn't be around any kind of people. Right. Well, okay, so then another thing that I was surprised was when you were uh, being hunted by the Philippine Army, you know, we just always assume that militaries have the, the highest falutin gear, right? Heat-seeking this and right. uh, extra special that. And these guys had, like, a flashlight. But what they could do yeah. with that flashlight was nothing short of remarkable. I'm going to play the clip, and I'm going to ask you about that after this. Take a look. Okay. This 16-man unit doesn't depend on high-tech assets, but relies solely on their highly tuned tracking skills. The rangers look for Joel's tracks by casting, systematically searching in a circular pattern to locate any sign of spore. <laughs> We cannot see clearly these uh, footprints because there is no direct light on it. But if I'm going to use my flashlight, then make a shadow on the footprints, then I could tell this is a Panama boots, like my boots. This is still fresh. It's heading toward southwest direction. I suspect that the people who are hunting for Brian Laundry uh, will have a flashlight and they will have skills about those footprints <laughs> and all the rest, but they're going to have a lot more, right, Joel? Yes, yeah, they're going to have all the tech that's available. I mean, those guys were the most exceptional trackers I went against in the whole uh, series, Manhunt, Lone Target. And what they could do with just their tracking skills was exceptional. Um, and other people I went against that were completely dependent upon technology were easier to beat. Um, but whenever you're going against technology, it's always man against man. It's always brain against brain. If I'm going against a dog or a drone or anything that's not the actual tracker, I have to beat the tracker. I don't try to beat the dog. You can't beat the dog. I'm not trying to beat the, the um, infrared uh, thermal imaging. I can't beat that. What I can beat is I can get in the man's head that's operating all that stuff and make him doubt what he's getting from his technology or from his dog. And so that's what you have to do. You have to break the bond between or the connection, the communication between the technology and the person operating it. So it's always a strategic game, a mental game against the people hunting you. I, I could talk to you. I think for it's a matter of time hour, for laundry. You know? And I'm glad you said that because I think that's what a lot of people watching keep hoping, that it's a matter of time. They, they want this to come to an yeah. end. They want closure for the Petito family. And they just want yes. answers as to this bizarre mystery. I want to just let our viewers know about uh, something that, you, that you've done recently, Joel. It's cool. It's like all the, oh, by the way, all the secrets, right? All your secrets of how to evade and escape. It's actually an app. It's called Escape and Evade. Um, you go to escapeandevademobile.com. Is that right, Joel? Escape and evade mobile.com. Yes, Is that going to get you there? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's going to get you to our website, and you can sign up there, and you'll get updates, and it'll let you know what's going on with this as we, we develop and launch uh, the app. But it's going to be an amazing augmented reality um, game experience where you're able to do deception trails, set booby traps, track people. Um, it's, it's a very intense experience, and I think people are going to like it.